Hey everybody out there, it's Jason. Uh, just wanted to do a quick video on cleaning your air rifle barrel. Um, if you're an experienced air gunner, uh, this video is not going to be of any interest to you. It's for beginners like me. Uh, I just want to pass on some information that I've learned over the last couple of months since I really got into, into this stuff about the do's and don'ts of cleaning the barrels on these guns. Air rifles uh, like these brake barrels have steel barrel inside but they're made out of a softer steel so using uh, wire brushes brass br whatever things like that are pretty much a major no-no with them um, you can damage the rifling which will kill your accuracy uh, now speaking of accuracy um, something else I've learned that a lot of air gunners say is that they never clean the barrels on their guns and the reason for that is um, you need to build up kind of that layer, basically like breaking your barrel in of some lead deposits in there. A, uh, a rifle or a shotgun or something like that, you know, that leaves behind, you know, gunpowder residue, uh, metal from the shells, you know, all, all kinds of stuff like that that gets left in the barrels. These are not gunpowder guns. They do not do that. The, most of the residue that they leave is a little bit of lead. And then the material that they put on the pellets to keep them from oxidizing. So you really don't need to clean them very often. But this is a new rifle, and when you get a new rifle, you do need to clean it. Just like any other uh, gun that is shipped, or you know, it could sit for months, or maybe even years. They'll put uh, the cosmoline-like substance, it may even be cosmoline, I don't know what they use for sure, but in these barrels to keep them from rusting. So we need to clean that stuff out when we get them in order to shoot accurately. Now, something else that I've learned about uh, these guns is there's a lot of guys that say you need to shoot three, four, maybe even a full tan of pellets through it before you're really going to start getting your good accuracy because it will build up that uh, layer of the lead deposits in there as it's going, uh, as you're shooting those pellets. So, and as you shoot one pellet through it's going to blow some out and it's going to leave some behind so eventually it's going to get to that steady spot where um, your accuracy is going to be at its most so um, the only time that you should clean these barrels is when your POI or your point of impact begins to change so and that that can be an indication that the barrel is maybe a little too dirty and it needs to have a patch run through it or whatever kind of cleaning kit that you decide to use as you may have seen at the beginning of the video, today we're going to be using a Hoppies uh, Boar Snake. It's 177 caliber. This Boar Snake is made just for these guns. And we're also going to be using the Hoppies CLP. What this stuff does is it lubricates, it cleans and lubricates and protects it all at the same time. And which I think, you know. Some people might say, well, yeah, that sounds too good to be true, whatever, these are air rifles. This is, you know, not a real high dollar one, so I think that this is an adequate product for this gun, as well as this boar snake. Now, you can see this boar snake here. One of the things I'm liking about this, uh, it says right on here, air gun, no brush. There are no brushes in this boar snake. A lot of boar snakes have brushes built into them for helping clean out rifle barrels. And, and things of that nature so these do not have those which is a good thing you don't want to be dragging a brush down your air rifle barrel so it's a uh, pretty simple guys I've actually already cleaned this barrel just for the sake of not fumbling around on the video which I'll probably still do but I just want to make it as quick and concise as possible to show you guys on, on how to do this so um, Normally, I would have this uh, rest sitting on the edge of the table, so when I break the barrel, it's hanging straight down to make it a little bit simpler, but for the sake of the video, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to scoot this back a little bit. I'm going to break the barrel, and it should be in frame where I can show you how to, how to do this. So we're going to go ahead and slide this guy back. It should be in frame right there. I'm going to pick the rifle up. I'm going to break the barrel. I'm going to set it down right here, and we're going to get our handy dandy boar snake out. It's kind of nice too, it comes with this packaging, it has this, you squeeze the sides, 
the top comes right off. This is also a handle. I'll show you guys how that thing works for pulling the boar snake through. I actually didn't use it when I cleaned the gun earlier. So here's the boar snake, guys. <clears throat> Pretty simple. When I first opened this thing up, I was looking at this strap going, there's no way that thing's going to go down that 177 barrel. It just looked way too big to me. But it did. So one thing we're going to do, I'm going to take a little rag. I'm going to put it down here because I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of this CLP down inside the barrel. Now, as you guys can see, the top on that's kind of big. So what I've done, I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up three pack of these little bottles. The other two have uh, some uh, Pelgun oil and some silicone lubricant in them. It was two dollars for three of these bottles. Pull this guy off. And as you can see, the tip of that's pretty fine. I just cut the very end of it off. And like I say, I would normally have this hanging down. Would this work a little better as far as coating the whole inside of the barrel? But I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Like so. And normally I'd kind of work that around a little bit. And this is also why we have the rag here. To catch any excess that might come out of the end of it there. Now, if it's, you know, pretty dirty barrel, like I said, I already cleaned this one, so it's clean, so we'll just make this quick, but normally you would let that stuff sit for a little bit and kind of uh, loosen up that gunk from the shipping, the Cosmoline or whatever it is that they use in there. One other thing I would like to point out, on this loop, the first time I tried to pull it, pull it through, you can barely see there was a tag on there. And when it got to that tag, it just knotted up and there was no way it was going to go through. At first I thought I was going to have to cut this loop off, but then I saw that little tag and I pulled it off and after I did that it went right through, no problem. Alright. Take our boar snake. Has a weighted end on it. Put it in the barrel. And especially if you got it hanging uh, straight down, it just flies right through. But even this way it goes through pretty easily. I'm going to keep feeding her in there until she comes out the end. If it ever does. I guess I'm eating my words right now, I guess. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm kind of straighten that out a little bit. You just kind of you pull this up. Get it seated down in there. Now this is where you can use this handle. As you can see, there's a notch right here. You can slide this through this hole, feed it into that notch, and you can use this handle to pull it on through. I'm not even going to worry about that. You can use this if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab onto this and we're going to start pulling her through. And as you can see, it just goes right through there, guys. And it, I mean, it's tight. It's hard to pull. And it does fit very, very tight. And I will say this, if you have your stuff sitting up on the edge like that, like I said, pointing straight down, it's a little easier to pull. But also if you have a rest like this and you're doing it, make sure you got your one hand on here and the other hand pulling because I just about flipped this thing off the table earlier. Okay, as we can see this end here is sticking out. So we're just going to grab onto it and give it a pull. And a pull. And a pull, and a pull, and a pull. Goes through there just like that, guys. I ran this thing through probably five times. Only put uh, the cleaner and lubricant in there one time. Pulled it through there. You don't have to go crazy with it, guys. And try as I might earlier, I tried to get a shot down the barrel with the rifling, but my, my Samsung S7 that I shoot these videos on just couldn't quite get that dialed in. But if you guys pick up one of these boar snakes, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see see what they can do for you. It's it's pretty handy. No brushes. You don't have to worry about damaging your barrel. Even up through. Right, had a little te technical difficulty there, guys. My uh, one of my dogs jumped down off the couch and landed on my tripod. So kind of made for not such a great picture. So anyway, I'll continue here. I'm going to talk about this CLP. This is what I use in these barrels. 
this product contains distillates. Distillates are very bad for O-rings and seals and air guns. One of the nice things about the Tyro, you can see the O-ring is not mounted in the barrel, it's mounted in the breech. So you don't have to worry about that, but like on my F4, uh, I'm 90% sure that the O-ring is mounted in the barrel. I'd have to look at it for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's there. So if you're going to use this stuff, you need to make sure that as soon as you're done, you uh, um, wipe it down really good and apply some of your uh, uh, silicone lubrication to it to, to keep your O-rings from rotting out. So, um, Something else that I wanted to talk about, $9.99 at Bass Pro Shop for the CLP. It is a two ounce bottle. Doesn't sound like much, but this will last a very long time. The boar snake itself, $14.95. Again, at Bass Pro Shop is where I got this stuff. I looked online at most places I saw these were 20 or more just for the boar snake. So surprisingly, Bass Pro was cheaper, which is, you never see that. Maybe they're just getting rid of them and not going to keep them anymore. I don't know. But I did manage to get one for $15. And the cleaner is 10 So, I uh, can't really think of anything else as far as cleaning these guns. One thing I do use on the outside of them, I do have, I had this before the CLP. I think they're pretty similar product, but the rim oil, again, contains distillates. Don't use this inside your gun. It will mess it up. But I do use it with these little rags that I bought at O'Reilly's for, I don't know, three bucks for like four or five of them. And I'll wet this down a little bit. Like this barrel has a plastic composite cover on it, but there is some exposed metal here. And when we get done messing around with them and stuff, I'll just put a little bit of that on there and wipe that down. It gets all the fingerprints and crap off of it. It keeps that stuff from getting crusty. Uh, one thing... One other thing I do want to talk about is what I'm going to be doing in the next video. I know the last one I talked about, I showed you guys these Pinties that I bought for these guns. And as you can see, I finally got my conversions. They're uh, UTG. I'll show you one. This is the one for the other Tyro that I have. I ordered these from uh, on eBay from a store called Extreme Tactical. And they do have a website. And... Uh, and they're on Facebook and stuff too. I checked them out. These were like seven eighty a piece, free shipping, guys. That's a that's a killer deal. They're all aluminum. Uh, it's good construction. It even comes with the uh, little locking screw, which, like I said, I'm new to this stuff, so maybe they all do. But it just it's a good. It feels like a really good sturdy product. Uh, but we'll get into that more in the next video. I'm going to install the the uh, conversion on the other Tyro and the other. Uh, penny red dot so that's what will be coming up next guys uh, I do want to say thanks to the uh, three people that liked my video out there thank you my first one uh, and uh, I'm gonna keep making them whether people watch them or not I like making them it's fun uh, like I said I'm new to this and if you're new to it too there's information that you need to know and I, I can get, kind of go down rabbit holes and I learn a lot of information and I, and I like to pass it on so if any of you guys have any questions uh, about anything uh, feel free to ask me if I can't answer them I will do my best to find the answer for you so uh, once again thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video one more thing I forgot to mention per Hoppy's instructions on these you're supposed to wet this area with your solvent or cleaner or whatever you're using don't do that on an air gun because when you get that slid down through there and you begin to pull it through the barrel, it's going to squeeze some of that out and whatever O-rings, whatever you got up there, it's just going to get saturated with that cleaner and you do not want that. So I thought that was an important thing that I should point out about these. So uh, that's all. I think that's it.